Turning now to your community focus, well, like it or not, we turned back the clocks this weekend and House Minority Leader Blake Filippi has been a proponent of changing things for years now. And he joins me now live in studio to talk about that and more. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here, Kim. Thank you. So I know over the past several years, not this year, but in years past, you've introduced some legislation to end the practice of switching the clocks. And I think your proposal was that we join Atlantic time. What do you think we should do? Uh, so I think it needs to be regional. Atlantic time is essentially staying in our summer hours sprung forward. Uh, but if we move, we have to do it with Massachusetts and, and New England and hopefully New York. Uh, so we're happy to see that Sheldon Whitehouse has seen the light and uh, is talking about it in Congress because we think it needs to be regional. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is this something that Rhode Island can do alone or is this something that we have to do at least in tandem with the rest of New England? I mean, legally we could do it alone, but practically it wouldn't make sense. We have to do it with our neighbors. Um, so that, that's the proposal. And our proposal was to, to say we would go if Massachusetts went because Massachusetts was studying it at the time. But that never got any traction. They put out a report that recommended that it happened, but I think everyone knows it really has to come from Congress. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, state regulators are still weighing the proposed New England uh, Care New England Lifespan Hospital merger, but you told the Boston Globe that they should kill the deal. Why do you think they should kill this proposed hospital merger? Because it will give a near monopoly on medical delivery to one company within our state. Uh, if you remember several years ago, Partners Healthcare, uh, one of the best hospital groups in Massachusetts, uh, Mass General Brigham and Women's, and they, uh, they wanted to come here and, and buy Care New England, one of our struggling hospital groups. Uh, our government killed that deal and said, we want to get Lifespan and Care New England to merge. I don't want any company having 80% of the market share for pretty much anything, especially the, the delivery of, of healthcare. So what is, what is your message then to, to the governor, to state regulators who are considering this deal? Is I think you need to look at it very skeptically and do what's in the best interest of the citizens of Rhode Island. And medical care, like everything in our lives, is better from competition. And if we brought partners down here and enabled them to purchase the hospital group that they wanted to purchase, they would start competing against lifespan. And it would be better for consumers. And we would be, they'd be competing for us instead of us competing for an appointment. I want to shift gears again, something that you tweeted recently uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, about education. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but you said the state must take action to fix the problems within the education system or amend the Constitution. What's your thinking there? So in our state constitution, there is a fundamental right uh, for the children of this state to get a decent, uh, uh, adequate education. And it's the General Assembly's duty to provide that. Our courts have said that that only can be vindicated through the General Assembly. It's not a right that can be enforced in court. And other states have taken the tack that where a child is not getting a proper education, it's that right can be vindicated in court. I'm very skeptical about having the courts involved and in telling us how to educate our kids, but the General Assembly is failing in its duty. The school committees are our agents. It's a civil rights issue. The ability to participate in our society is contingent upon a foundational education. And for many children in this state, that is, we have failed. And so, we have to fix it. So how do, how do you fix it? What do lawmakers need to do? So I, I think that we need to aggressively use the Crowley Act to go into school districts that are failing and take them over and provide a, a adequate education, a basic education. It's not just Providence where our school districts are failing. It's many communities in this state. I want to use a lot of the APRA funding to be a war chest that our state will use over a 10 year turnaround to go in and provide this necessary civil right to children. Everything is connected to it. Everything is. All the economic development plans we have, it's building castles on sand if we do not provide a critically thinking, educated workforce. No one from the Republican Party has declared yet to be Rhode Island's next governor. It's been widely discussed that you are considering it, thinking about tossing your hat into the ring. Where are you at on that? I mean, we are, we're operating on our own timetable. Uh, we, we're looking at it. We want someone who is going to fix this state that's going to make it achieve its potential. And I haven't seen that from any of the declared candidates yet. And that's clearly in our calculus. But we're on our own timetable and we are looking at it. What's the timetable look like? When, will we have an answer from you before the holidays? I, I honestly don't know. I mean, things are fluid. There's how a lot you, of fact. How do you not know? That's a big decision I mean, it, to make. I'm being honest. Mm. I'm being honest. I don't know what that, that drop dead date is. Things are fluid. Things change all the time. When the, the new RICAS scores came out last week and showed that many of our school districts are failing children, that affected our calculus. We're constantly bringing in facts and looking at the field and saying, what are we going to do? 
we don't know the answer to that yet. And what time horizon will we be making our decision? You know, we're not in a crowded primary like our Democratic colleagues. We're not. We're in a Republican primary, and it's a different calculus than the five people that are running on the Democratic side. All right, we will certainly stay tuned. House Minority Leader Blake Filippi, thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. And looking ahead to tomorrow when Rhode Island Attorney General Peter Nerona will join us live in studio for our monthly interview with him. That's tomorrow right here at 4.